Tiago, a very uh, impressive win for you. Uh, in, in the first round, it was a little more competitive. I'm curious how you thought the fight was playing out versus your expectations. Uh, I knew uh, I was down the first round, you know, yeah. he had a great distance, you know, Southpaw who was working his box and he's striking really good. So I knew, and my coach, uh, I, had great, I have great coaches at American Top Team, they told me, uh, move forward, you gotta move forward. So I did what they said and I guess work, work it out. <laughs> yeah, you could yeah. say that. And not only did you move forward, I mean, you, you went for the takedown, you dropped down, you went immediately to the leg. I'm curious, did you, in your head, did you know kind of the sequence that you were expecting when you, when you ran forward like that? Uh, yes, uh, when I go against uh, southpaws, uh, I do this a lot, you know, right hand, and uh, I step it from my right leg and uh, I go to the double leg. So, and I, this move I drill a, a lot because um, I know he has a really good single leg defense, but he, had a, he doesn't have a good ground game. So I knew even if I were in the bottom, uh, I would be an advantage for me, you know? So I drill this a lot, even in the locker room, uh, single leg, the, he defend, uh, go straight for the foot lock or heel hook. Fantastic. And it looked, you were kind of turned the other way, but it looked like maybe he tapped once before the fight stopped. Did you feel that at all, or did you know if he tapped? Yeah, uh, I felt he's tapping, but uh, he didn't stop, and the referee didn't stop, so I kept going, I kept going, and I, I heard his leg popping a few times. But I mean, obviously, any, it's just what you're told to do, right, is the yeah, way to the referee. Yeah, like, uh, he, he tapped, you know, uh, first I went for the foot lock, his leg popped, he tapped, referee didn't stop. But when, when he tapped, I, uh, I stopped it, but I didn't let it go, you know? But the referee didn't stop, so I just kept going too. Fair enough. Well, this is an impressive win for you. Uh, obviously a name that's been around for a long time. So what do you think should come next for you now? Yeah, as, as I said, you know, uh, he's a former number six in the world, in the world, you know? So since I got to the UFC, uh, I got nothing but the fights, you know? Uh, first fight, short notice, elevation uh, against Benio Darius. Then I got a fight in Rio. Uh, then I, I went overseas to fight a tough Russian guy. So now Michael Johnson, two weeks notice uh, in the middle of this uh, pandemic, you know. So uh, if you have seen you wanna give me tough fights, yeah, that's what I want, you know. So why not uh, Anthony Pads? No, he wants uh come back to lightweight, so why not him, you know. Uh, I have all the tools to, to build him up, you know. Right. Uh, could you hear the commentators during the fight? A lot of fighters say they could hear Dan, uh, like Paul Felder or Daniel Cormier talking, and they could use that to their advantage. So did you hear the commentary during your fight? Uh, not really. I just was just focused on my coaches. You know, that's, that's what I, I was focused on, was on his voices. And how was this fight week amid the pandemic? It wasn't, there was no, everyone's stuck in the same hotel. Everyone has to get checked every day. So what was, fight week like for you during this pandemic? Uh, it was uh, a little bit different, you know, we had to get checking, uh, check it every day, make sure everybody was safe, you know. Uh, I want to say thank you to the UFC, thank you Dana White and San Shelby for making this event happen, you know. Uh, we are fighters, we are very grateful for this. Last one, what did you make of the news of Jacare's uh, testing positive last week? You know, uh, I hope, uh, and I wish uh, safe recovery for him, speedy recovery for him and his family, his corners. And uh, thanks God, uh, UFC uh, could um, detect that, you know, so he can, he, they can take care of him now.